สวัสดีครับ I'm Point from k o n p o p Last week we talked about how we must not wait for happiness and we must learn to create happiness from within in the here now by enjoying the small things in life by bringing our mind back to the present moment and such. In other words, don't put the cart before the horse. Put the horse before the cart. Now I want to expand on this topic a little bit more today, and explore it from a slightly different perspective. First of all, if you notice the nature of unhappiness or discontentment, happiness, especially based on not having what we want. Not having the car we want, not having the house we want, not having the uh, the money we want, the relationship we want, the job we want, the promotion we want, the career advance we want, the friendships we want, and the list goes on. The nature of it only ever lies in the mind's perception. Would you agree? Where there is some process going on in your mind, some commentary. Thoughts that tell you or paint a certain story for you to believe about something to regret in the past or something to worry about in the future, or more specifically in this example, uh, some thoughts to get you to feel a sense of lack or a sense of scarcity because you don't have that which you want, and therefore you cause yourself to be unhappy. Now let's look at the, the nature of these thoughts for a moment, right? These thoughts, which are out of line or out of tune with the present moment reality, because first of all, you're probably drifting off in the past into the past, right? Or drifting off into the future, and you live there. The idea of how, for example, I don't have a loving relationship because. I had low self-esteem and was bullied in the past, for example, right? Or I'm never gonna get a relationship because I've always been like this, and therefore I can't change. See, and this gets you to believe in the validity of your thoughts without realize, without realizing, or without recognizing that they are just that. They are just thoughts. Thoughts are not facts. Feelings are not facts. Thoughts are not reality. But you believe it to be so, and then you feel a sense of lack. You s e n d you feel a sense of deficiency, uh, a sense of scarcity, and you kind of begin to resent your current circumstances in your life. We could say that you're focused on the not having of it. You're focused on the lack of it, and therefore you're pushing against reality because. What this implies is it implies that you are unhappy with the way life or reality has unfolded for you in your current life situation, and therefore you feel unhappy, or you feel that you're not good enough, or you feel that you're not enough because you haven't made it somehow. You see, and I want you to consider also that the nature of this suffering is predicated on you. Looking outside yourself rather than inside. What that means is you're looking outside yourself to the literal circumstances right now, and you're saying, "I don't have that thing that I want," and therefore I depend on that condition. You're looking for outside conditions to make you happy. You notice that? So again, to sum up real quick, three main points. Number one, right? The nature of these thoughts are they are out of tune or out of line from the present moment. You're either drifting off into the past, thinking and finding reasons to explain why you suffer in the present, or you're drifting off into the future, worried or feeling doubtful that you can get it because you don't, uh, you don't feel that it will ever come to you because you've always been this way, therefore it'll never happen. Something like that. Okay, not in line with present moment. Number two, do you notice that these thoughts? Um, they are pushing against reality. They're pushing against reality because they invite you or they encourage you 
to protest your current life situation and therefore find unhappiness there, right? So these thoughts are pushing against reality. Number three, these thoughts are, uh, they get you to believe in the validity of them and therefore you forget that thoughts are not facts, feelings are not facts. Right? They're just that. They're just one experience that your mind creates in here now. And you believe it to be so. And most importantly, in this third part, this third observation is that these uh, thoughts and emotions lead you to a conclusion where you do not feel powerful or you do not feel in control of your life. Notice that? Notice that? So what I'm trying to get at here is do you notice the the illusion of it all per se, how this unhappiness or feeling of scarce or not good enough is in this sense generated by the mind. And you are out of touch with reality for what it is, which is actually peaceful, joyful, and blissful and love, loving in a here now. Now I know that it may not seem like that in this current state of mind where you're pushing against reality and protesting against life because life situations have not unfolded in the way that you would desire. See that? Notice that. So what I'm trying to bring us back here is, first of all, do you notice that if we do not recognize this mechanism or this process of the mind, it very quickly, uh, leads us down the path where we generate and we create a limiting belief where we feel disempowered. We feel that we are not in control. We are not in control of our life circumstances and our life experiences. And therefore, it leads us to feel a sense of resentment in some way, shape, or form. Okay? I do apologize. There's a truck. Uh, passing by with some commercial and stuff like that. <laughs> we'll let it pass by for now. That's quite loud. So anyways, as I was saying, um, these thoughts, when you get trapped in this cycle, they become in one sense a self-fulfilling prophecy because they get you to focus on the lack of what you want in life. In other words, it gets you to focus on what you don't have and you feel resentment because you don't have it when you want it. And this reinforces the belief where life is, you know, where life, there's something to feel upset about or feel resentful about or be in protest against. In other words, you're pushing against life. You're pushing against reality. That is a tiring way to go about life, wouldn't you agree? And also notice that you're in the habit of looking outside yourself for conditions of happiness, not inside. So I want to propose that this is where meditation can come in and really help you to regain perspective and bring your mind and attention back to the present moment where it is naturally peaceful, naturally joyful, and it becomes your anchor point or your reference point of understanding that you begin to realize that the moment you're feeling negative emotions, then there's something wrong that you have forgotten. You have forgotten about the nature of life, the process of life. And therefore, when you forget this, you pay the price because you're now pushing against reality and it drives you to feel resentful or feel upset or unhappy in some way, shape or form. So meditation is, is about where you place your attention and focus. And you want to train yourself to place your attention and focus in the present moment, which means placing it in your direct experience of reality. One common meditation that I've learned from a, a very respected teacher Buddhist monk teacher that I highly respect is a form of vipassana meditation. And put simply, to explain it simply, you begin by, of course, closing your eyes so that you limit the senses that you see and perceive, and you focus your attention on the rising and falling of your stomach. 
and you note the movement of the stomach. It is like scaffolding as you're building a building. This noting when your stomach expands due to an inhale, you note uh, rising, stomach is rising, or when the stomach uh, deflates because of an exhale, you note uh, falling because the stomach is contracting and falling in on itself. And what this does, it, it gets you to train your mind to bring it back to what is right here now in your experience. So your mind is, is given uh, a task or some work to do. This is what the Buddhist monks like to say as an analogy. You're giving your mind something to do. Instead of being lost, wandering off into the future or wandering off into the past and feeling some sense of resentment, your mind is now preoccupied with, with what is right before it, the real experience. And if you begin to do this practice and you keep on doing it, whenever you drift off, you put it back to your stomach. You drift off, you put it back to your stomach. You keep it focused on that center. What you begin to realize sooner or later is that most of your suffering is created by the mind. And you begin to develop perspective that, wait a minute, when you take a step back and watch things for what they are. Observe phenomena in an objective way without judging it, without judging yourself. You begin to cultivate a more peaceful sense of uh, experience, peaceful sense of mind, a joyful state of being. And sometimes with practice, with diligent practice, you can begin to even experience bliss. And this becomes an anchor point for you to realize where home truly is. Home, therefore, is in the present moment. And I am by no means a master of this because it takes time and practice to cultivate. And we must see the value of it first before we want to even embark on building a habit or discipline out of this. But I guarantee you, with practice, you will see profound results for yourself. So this is uh, an addition to last week's video about the nature of, of how you cause yourself to be unhappy because you think that you need various conditions in life. You need that car, that house, that finance, that money, that relationship, that job, etc. to in order to be happy. But happiness can be accessed here and now. And wouldn't it be better to move through life from a place of happiness first, contentment first, peace of mind first, joyfulness first, before needing external things in order to allow yourself to feel that way. And I think that is the art of life. When you begin to do this, you begin to move in line with the process of life itself. You begin to trust life as it is. You begin to trust the unfolding of reality as it is, not protest it. And the more you begin to trust the process of life, the more you will therefore be able to experience the fullness of life. And I borrow this concept from many teachers like Eckhart Tolle, Sadhguru, and um, so many other teachers, which I don't even know where to begin if I were to list off all their names. Uh, Rupert Spira, J. Krishnamurti, um, Wayne Dyer, um, and the list goes on. Okay. Now, before we end the clip today, I want to briefly also explain one more thing. In addition to practicing meditation to pull yourself back to the present moment and therefore to cultivate and develop awareness or mindfulness, I want to propose the idea that you want to take these opportunities to contemplate on and, con and to consider the nature of your thinking styles, the nature of your inner voice conversations, the, the, the thought conversations that you have with yourself about your life circumstance. Pay attention to the nature of it and pay attention to the belief systems that cause you to feel unhappy. And notice that all these unhappy thoughts or all these limiting beliefs have one thing in common. It is nothing more than a habit of perception where you are looking outside yourself 
to explain something, to explain a cause for your experience when actually it's actually all happening within through the way in which you think about it, your attitude of it, your perspective of it. Okay. And if you are in the habit of looking outside yourself, you are therefore giving your power away because looking outside yourself means you're looking for outside conditions to be the way you want in order to feel happy. And therefore, you're giving your power away. For example, if your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, or your wife argues with you or leaves you, then therefore, by that implication, if I need that person to be happy, then therefore, you're giving your power away. The moment they argue with you or the moment they leave you, you're going to feel negative, depressed, sad, resentful very quickly. You must learn that in one sense, you cannot depend on anything else for happiness, for true happiness. You can only ever depend on yourself. So two main things. Practice meditation to bring yourself back into the present moment. To get a frame of reference that here and now is not as bad as I previously thought. It's actually quite peaceful, quite joyful. And when I suffer, it's essentially when I forget about this. See that? When I suffer is when I forget about this. Number two, consider and contemplate the nature of your thoughts, your thinking, your attitudes, your perceptions, and your beliefs that cause you to look at happiness in a very conditional way. And realize that the nature of those perceptions is you're looking outside yourself to explain a cause that is actually happening within you. For example, you ask questions like, what is happening to me to make me feel depressed? Oh, that's right. My friend is uh, not behaving the way I want. My partner is not behaving the way that I want. Therefore, they are causing me to be unhappy and depressed. See that? You're giving your power away. But if you look inside yourself, you ask yourself what we could call internal questions like, wait a minute, what am I doing to cause myself to feel this way? Then you realize that, ah, my own thoughts perceptions, attitudes, and beliefs have a very big and significant role to play here. And therefore, you have more control over how you choose to think, the attitudes and perceptions and beliefs that you choose to adopt than you may have previously believed. But this must come from a place of self-awareness and self-observation. And therefore, learning to challenge and change unhelpful thoughts, thinking, attitudes, perceptions, and beliefs, okay? So to sum it up, the main points in this video, uh, don't wait for happiness part two, is simply this. Number one, recognize and realize that the nature of your thoughts that cause you to feel a sense of lack is a reflection that you are out of alignment or you are not in tune with the present moment here and now. And you can train yourself to bring your mind back to the here and now. And you will realize that it's actually much more safe, much more joyful than I have previously uh, understood it or realized it to be. And I just forgot about the wonderful nature of the joyful present moment. With training, you begin to develop this understanding more and more on deeper and deeper and more profound levels. And number two, Contemplate on the nature of your thinking and your beliefs and realize that they are always in the habit of looking, out, of looking outside yourself to derive a sense of happiness. Therefore, you're looking at happiness in a conditional way and ask yourself, how can you challenge and change that and bring it to more internal sources so that you are a self-contained joy and happiness producing machine and that you are learning to experience the fullness of life on deeper and deeper and more profound levels. I hope this video was valuable. Let's practice and grow and develop together. Please do like and share if you found it was helpful and comment to share your thoughts. I will see you next time. สวัสดีครับ